When you get down to the dock, it's pa docks, it's pandemonium. If you work on the ship ships now as the ravens stand over bodies of people while a huge crowd roars in anger. Bolvox axes are covered in blood. What happened? You shout, pushing your way through the rioters. What do you think would happen? Responds Bolvok coolly. Didn't take them long to figure out we were building ships right under their noses. They can't have one. You gonna lend a hand or just stand around? Fight alongside the ravens. Get up on a roof and fire arrows. I try to calm people down. You brandish your axe low and try to find a voice over the chaos. It goes wrong quickly when one of the rioters gets a quick jab in, smashing you across the bridge of the nose, covering your face in blood. The last thing you remember is falling backward. By the time you, by the time you regain consciousness, the riot is finally being driven off. I won't save you next time, you hear Bolvok say. This one's for free. You stagger back to the wall with a new injury. Is Rook now injured? Am I that good with people? I haven't got a hero, so I can't look at it. I can. It's hiding. No, but Ivor's injured two day for two days. I may have to swap him out. Ivor, can we really keep this up? Ivor looks like he hasn't slept for days. We've, we've lost a lot of fighters, he mumbles. The weight of the situation is crushing. Then, from far in the distance, you hear a horn. Dredge don't use horns, it occurs to you. It's the Rohirrim! Ivan appears at your side just as a long caravan of people come into view, Dredge turning to attack them. Who's that? You ask. It can't be, says Ivan. He runs towards the gate, chatting. You see their banner? It's Hakon! As you wonder how they got up here, the gates are heaved open and you charge onto the field, clearing a path through the Dredge. Charge! Um... This is one of those things where actually Ivor's probably still not a bad choice, even though he's injured. Um, oh, maybe Kremera actually. What's his ability? Forge ahead. Oh, that's other people get turned after you. Ah, we'll throw him. We'll throw him in. We'll see what happens. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong this time? Uh, everyone dies. That could go wrong. Hmm, where are the majority, the majority of people on this side? So we'll put Gunnolf over here. No, 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 no. Put you there, put you there, you there. I'm all green with green and blue with blue. Ready. I know what I'm doing. He lied horribly. Chip away at the armor. Gah! Oh, of course you got the splinter type ability, haven't you? I mean, don't have the, uh... Run! Again, chip away armor. Because we haven't got, uh... The thing. Brain. Oh dear, no. Where's that going? Around here. <gasps> Ooh, if I do that, hit two. That'll hit these three. Gun off is awesome! <laughs> Oh, Gunnolf, favourite character. We need to chip away this guy's armour now. Probably shouldn't have... Well, I took out three guys. It's probably worth it. Keep chipping away his armour. That might give me some decent shots with these guys. I'm just focusing damage on the armor at the moment, just because it seems to probably be the best thing I can do. You really want to be standing next to Gunolf. Keep damaging the armor, that might give us a shot. Ah, I shouldn't have done that, because... Oh dear, I definitely should not have done that. Yeah, there's no diagonals, is there? I need you to move right. You go up here. Do more damage to his armor. Yeah. I'm really bad at playing this game. Mm, I don't want to kill people. Kill you. No, 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 no. Tempest. Ah. Yeah, use our own horn. Yeah, we've run out and we. 
No, not let. Leave a let alone. So if I go there, I chip away this undo mark prayer. Chip away his armor, he hits four. Five? If I go here, chip away his armor. That goes down to ten, which is five. But then we hit, we get the explosion, don't we? Or I could do the two. No, I'll just do the one, actually. Oh, oddly, Fuzz also gets a shot. Hmm. That wouldn't have done enough. I'm not very good at combat in this game. Take him down. And then we just got these ranged people. Oh, dear. More bombs. I could arc lightning here, couldn't I? Or I could... no, I'm gonna run away and do arc lightning over here. Leave me alone! Run away! Maximum damage. Don't think it's gonna help onto anyone else. You move up. Ouch! Because these bombs at some point are going to go off, aren't they? So I could run over here. Oh, it's, is it these two? Yeah, it's these two. He's going to get hit by one of them for sure. So what I could do is run, take a shot at him, or... She'll get a shot if I do... If I do the two... No, I can only do the one, anyway. He'll go down to five. He'll take four damage from Odd Leaf. So it's probably better if I just do the shot. Go over here, give me a bit more flexibility in my shooting. Use my last willpower to do seven damage. Oh, it would be this fellow, when this fellow goes that these will blow up. Then. Probably could have, probably should have used the willpower actually. I don't think, yeah, I didn't think that would have done enough damage. If I move up, oh, if I move up, I can kill the big guy. It's not a massive threat, really, but if I go there, I can finish him off, and other people can move around to take these guys on. Uh, actually, that's not going to do me a huge lot of good, is it? I've just got to do what I can to damage these guys' armor, so other people can do damage. Take this guy on because he's got the most health, so it's the most strength and most damage. So if I run here, take the shot, you're down, then it's just this guy. We just need to. Lightning, which, okay, so we just do the three, and you're down. Blasted apart by a lightning bolt. There we go. And Gunnolf managed to survive. Huzzah! Oddleaf gained a, earned a promotion. We gained more renown. More renown is good. Juno! I wasn't sure I'd ever see you again, Ivind. She smiles and they embrace. Avond is completely taken aback, as though he doesn't dare believe she's real. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to Sigurdholm. I ran into problems. That's putting it lightly. There's a mile-wide mile wide canyon practically splitting the world in two over those hills. Couldn't find a place to cross. Worse, Dredger practically falling out of it like blood from a wound. They're not coming from the north anymore. They're everywhere. We noticed... Glad to see you made it out alive, Ingvar. I take it the others didn't. Hakon becomes quiet. Then he motions towards Juno. She got across somehow. Found her out cold for a second time since leaving Strand. We need every axe we can right now. Bella, where is here? Ugh, gods be damned. I thought I was free of that menace. I will deal with Bellower. Come on. No need to tempt him by standing out here. 
Ooh. Hakon's caravan enters the city, fighting off waves of dredge as they go. To our relief, hundreds of skilled warriors are now safely in border scarred. <laughs> That's a lot of people. <gasps> Supplies! Uh, Hakon joins you with his personal bodyguard, Morgra. Oh, sweet! Oh, yeah, okay. Well, no, we would have been losing clansmen anyway. Oh, well. We've got 97 right now, no. Hakon joins you with his personal bodyguard, Morgra. Behind him, the Prince Ludin and his entourage are in tow, though looking less than pleased to be here. I have one last trip to make. I need this one to come with me, she says, pointing to you. I'm sorry, Avind. You must wait for me one last time. Do not let the city fall before I return. It takes everything within Avind's power to hold back, but he does. She turns to you. Rook, come with me. We'll return in two days. Maybe less if you're as quick as you look. Tell anyone who needs to know. Where? Why? Not far, says Juno. She pauses and something shifts in your vision for just a moment. I know it's hard, she says, her voice filling your head. And you've already been through a lot. As she speaks again, the rest of the world melts away. But you're needed. You can't find the words to argue. So are these... You don't remember leaving the city, but here you are, walking through unfamiliar ground behind Juno. You're alone, aside from hundreds of dredge who are all facing towards an enormous stone ahead. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up. I thought these looked like dredge. Yeah, there's a stone singer. What on earth is going on? I hope we don't have to have a fight with these guys. I don't think it would go well. It's another godstone, isn't it? Hmm. Hmm. We're at the godstone of Stravs. You glanced nervously around, but the dredge didn't seem to hear her. It's okay. You can speak. Softly. Is this where you're going to sacrifice me? Juno smiles. What could have come across as profoundly creepy looks sincere instead. No. The dredge cannot see us. To be more precise, they can see us, but I've convinced them to be unconcerned. I can understand your apprehension, though. Uh, who are you, though? I wish we'd had time for a proper introduction. My name is Juno. I am on the Mender Council. You've met Avind, my apprentice. How are you doing these things? Controlling mines? I thought Menders built things and healed wounds. You are right. Menders do these things. Some of us still practice the teachings given to us to the given to the Loon Mother's first creations. We are called Valka. I believe I am the only one who can influence another's mind. Then why not take control of Belwar? I learned the talent to heal minds, not control them, though even some Valka have trouble believing this. Taking control of Belwar, it is the difference between convincing a child to sit still and telling a starving bear to stop being hungry. The truth is, we're rarely a match for the Sundra anymore. Our advantage is that we can train more Valka. It's also our weakness. The Valka pass on and lose their knowledge, while the Sundra simply grow older and more powerful. Bellowa is both immortal and beyond my influence, to a point. Then how do we stop him? The God of Secrets will play a part. As will you. Why did you pick me? Why didn't you take Ivind? Or Hakon? You don't even know me. I apologize for putting you in danger. Avind must keep Borsgaard from falling while we are away. And if something goes wrong here, I need to be certain one of us makes it back alive. I saw the thoughts of each person when I arrived at Borsgaard. You were the only one I knew would return. What do you mean? You would find your way back to Alette, no matter what. <sighs> All right, what are we doing out here? Do you know of the god Stravs? Few know this stone exists, even amongst those who have lived their whole lives in Borsgard. When Dengler deals in fortune, Stravs taught, taught men the value of trade in a different way. He showed them that it has consequence. Two sides of the same coin. See the silver in the stone? The gales up here wear away the stone, 
but the metal remains. We need a piece of this silver. The god Stravs is wreathed by imagery of silver weapons. The myths say he traded these weapons to the gods, and they used them to kill each other. Those who seek out the stone call him the god of trade. The menders call him the god of secrets. He was both. And uh, why are we surrounded by dredge? Why are they here? They seem to be drawn to the godstone. There are many things we don't know about Stravs. Maybe they see him as a patron, or it is an attraction they cannot explain. Does Stravs have something to do with that serpent in Einatoft? What was that thing? I cannot say. Can't? I have my suspicions, but until I've had time at the Mender Libraries, it would be unwise to speculate. For all our knowledge, it always seems as though we know little. <laughs> Imagine how the rest of us feel, then. On the contrary, the less people know, the more certain they tend to be. Right. Well, let's get what we need and go. Indeed, you'll need to dislodge at least a fistful of the metal. We will forge it into an arrow to slay Bellower. Wait, after everything you told me, make a magic arrow to shoot Bellower. That's all it takes. Why didn't you do that a long time ago? Juno gets a faraway look in her eyes. No, that is not all it takes. What I tell you now must not be repeated. The arrow will not kill Bellower, even were it to strike his heart. He has no physical weaknesses. But it will sow doubt in his mind. When it pierces him, it will help him to believe that he is dying. The rest of you will convince him, convince him of it with sword and axe. Everyone that fights at your side must believe it to be true. You're going to th trick him into thinking he's dead? That is the most insane... He really can't be killed? No. Someday he will awaken and realize he's not actually dead. I imagine he would be quite upset. First, we must make the arrow. Focus on the task at hand. She looks knowingly at the godstone, waiting for you to start climbing. Rook, I am not certain how the dredge will react when you do this. And behind us is a sudden drop. So, be careful. This is gonna go badly. Yeah, sudden drop. Cliffs. 